in an approach called brainstorm, I discuss in the book by that name the idea that there's an essence of adolescence that for most of us, whether we're parents or adolescents, we just haven't known about. And that this essence, fortunately, spells the word essence itself. And let's review the top four aspects of the changes in the adolescent brain that can help us understand how compassion and empathy at the root of well-being can be cultivated during adolescence and how we as adults can even recapture this essence in our own life. Basically, the essence is emotional spark, ES, social engagement, SE, novelty, N, and creative exploration, CE. When you look at these four features, what you find is that the adolescent brain is changing in very powerful ways. So instead of doing what the child's brain does, which is to keep on accumulating more connections called synaptic connections, pruning some away and making new myelin and creating a deeper connection, a more efficient connection among neurons in various ways as a child grows, there's a significant onset at the beginning of adolescence, somewhere around puberty, but not exactly the same as that time of sexual maturation, that the brain begins to do two things. One, it begins to prune itself away, meaning it gets to carve away existing synaptic connections and even remove some neurons. This decrease in the number of neurons and their connections is called pruning, and it's like pruning in a garden. The second phase of this remodeling of the adolescent brain that surprised everyone was after this pruning is happening in a big way, myelination begins, and myelin is the healthy sheath that connects the synaptically interconnected neurons. When you have myelin that's connecting two neurons, what it allows them to do is have the way they communicate be more efficient in that it's faster and more coordinated. And the numbers are really fascinating. The speed of the action potential, the ions moving in and out of the membrane, is 100 times faster. And the resting period, called a refractory period, after a neuron fires that it needs to rest before it will fire again, is 30 times quicker. So 30 times 100 is 3,000. Myelinated circuits are 3,000 times more coordinated and efficient. They're faster, of course, but even more than speed, they're more integrated. They allow this whole system to work in a much more effective way. So overall, Remodeling includes pruning and myelination, and this myelinating process, along with the remaining neurons that are still there, allows this system of the adolescent brain to become more integrated, to connect the differentiated areas and link them. Now, what does that mean? Well, first it means that the adolescent period is a period not where raging hormones are going out of control or that the adolescent is just a period of immaturity, it's a necessary period of development to allow the adolescent to get ready to leave home. Now, part of that is to increase the ability of this adolescent to move toward what's unfamiliar, what's uncertain, what can be uncomfortable, and even what can be unsafe. This natural drive to experience the unfamiliar, the uncertain, the uncomfortable, and the unsafe requires that nature change certain circuits in the brain. And some of those circuits that we've discovered in recent times are the reward circuitry of the brain, which drops the baseline dopamine level and increases release levels. And what that does is it makes an adolescent prone to not only feeling out of sorts and bored with just the status quo, but the release of dopamine is in a large part governed by novelty, doing something new, both with what you're thinking about and what you're doing with your body and how you're interacting with other people. So this dopamine change explains how nature tries to get the adolescent out of the house. But another way that nature has done this is something called hyper-rational thinking. And with hyper-rational thinking, what happens is the natural appraisal of the pros and cons of a decision are weighted in favor of the exciting parts of doing something 
and though an adolescent knows about danger, then there's a decreased emphasis on the significance of the downside of a choice. When you combine hyper-rational skewing of the balance in favor of the exciting things of a choice, and you add that to the dopamine changes of the reward system, you can see why adolescents are taking risky behaviors and endangering themselves, not just because of impulsivity, which is true in the beginning of the teenage years, but actually going well into adolescence. And adolescence lasts into the mid-20s. This remodeling period helps us see that adolescence does not end when the 20th birthday happens and the teen years are over. So that's another myth. We've debunked the myth then that adolescence and teenage years are the same. Adolescence is not a period of immaturity. It's a necessary phase of life to change the structure of the brain. We've learned that adolescence is not just a time where impulsivity is leading to danger, but it's hyper-rational thinking and dopamine changes. And another myth we need to debunk is the idea that adolescence is a time when you are just driven mad by raging hormones. Instead, this remodeling of the brain is what's changing. The relationship between emotional spark and social engagement and novelty and creative exploration and these changes in the brain is very profound. For emotional spark, we see that the adolescent brain is literally filled with more emotional processes emerging from the body, the lower areas of the brain, including the brain stem and the limbic area, as these emotional processes move upward into the cortex where reasoning happens. So an emotional spark has a downside. You can feel moody, irritable, not be able to trust your own emotional state. The upside is life is on fire and you're filled with passion during this period. Social engagement is very important, especially when we look to compassion and empathy, in that adolescents are driven to push away from their parents, not totally, but to push away from them for sure, and to move toward their peers. This is a natural way where even in other mammalian species, we see that there is safety in association. Being with other adolescents can be what allows you to survive, and if you're not a member of our group, it can allow you to be at risk of dying. So there can be a sense of urgency, a sense of life and death that an adolescent expresses to a parent. I need to have this kind of shoe. I need to have this kind of jacket. I need to go to that party. And you don't need to buy the shoe or the jacket or let them go to the party necessarily. But at least as parents, we can understand in a compassionate way, feeling for their suffering, an empathic way, understanding their point of view, that this life and death feeling is not something they're just making up because they're caving into peer pressure. It can be from millions of years of evolution that have basically built into the DNA that if you're an adolescent, you should be a member of at least a friendship, if not a larger group. Now, the downside of this social engagement process is that you can forsake morality for the benefit of membership, and that's called peer pressure. The positive side of this social engagement is that you learn social skills that can last a lifetime. You develop friendships that can teach you how to be connected to other people because the self is not living in isolation. And all the studies of well-being, mental well-being, medical well-being, longevity, happiness, show that relationships are a primary factor that allow you to achieve all those positive states. What's N? N is novelty. And we've seen that the dopamine changes drive you to experience new things. The hyper-rational thinking also pushes in that direction. And so we can see that novelty is built into what the adolescent experience is all about. The downside, of course, is risk and danger and being injured. And unfortunately, the research shows that adolescents are three times more likely to be seriously injured or to be killed during the adolescent period, even though their bodies are stronger and healthier than at any other time. What's CE? Well, actually, before we get to CE, what's the upside of novelty? The upside of novelty is it gets you ready to try on the unfamiliar, the uncertain, the uncomfortable, to try on the unsafe so that you can leave home. And that is a matter of literally life and death to actually allow our species to go out and expand uh, away from the family unit. And what's creative exploration about? CE is the term we use for the part of the essence of adolescence that allows you to challenge your mind. The adolescent mind is built to 
challenge the status quo, to look at what the laws are, look at what the rules are, look at what the world that the adults have given, and to say, mm, I'm not sure that's a good way it should be, and I'm not sure that's the way it has to be. So the adolescent mind is pushing, pushing, pushing the boundaries. Now, the downside, of course, is that as a child, you're just soaking in the world's knowledge, and you just accept that. That's the first dozen years of life or so. The second dozen years of life is a time where you can feel very disoriented. You can feel disillusioned that the parents you held up as gods and goddesses are no longer the heroes you once thought they were. You actually see them as fallible human beings. So this can be very disorienting. And then, of course, for the experience of pushing against the status quo, for some kids it can feel unsettling. What's the upside of it? The upside for the individual is the incredible excitement of imagining a whole new world. And for our human family, you can look at the facts that major innovations in art, in music, in science, and technology have all come from adolescent minds. And so innovation emerges from adolescence. And in fact, you could make an argument that the reason our human species is so profoundly adaptive to all regions of this planet, for good or for bad, but we've populated everywhere, is because of the ingenuity, the courage, and creativity of the adolescent mind. So I believe very deeply in terms of being empathic for adolescents, we need to understand these deep changes and allow them to learn about how the brain is changing, to learn about this period so we can support them. And as adults, not only will our relationships with adolescents be better, but if you look at all the studies of neuroplasticity, of how we keep our brains young throughout the lifespan, you'll find, in fact, that these four features, keeping passion in your life with an emotional spark, keeping relationships strong with your social networks of support and social engagement, trying new things with novelty, and challenging your mind with creative exploration, these are the top four ways you can keep your brain growing well and keeping yourself vital throughout the lifespan. Built into all of that is compassion, feeling another person's suffering and wanting to reach out and help, and empathy, understanding from another person's point of view. And when we look deeply at this brainstorm approach, compassion and empathy are built in to how we can allow adolescents growing through this period, adults trying to reclaim their essence, to each find compassion and empathy in their lives to try to support a life of connection, meaning, equanimity, and a sense of purpose. And when we do that, we have what the Greeks called eudaimonia, and all sorts of great things happen. We improve the regulation of our gene expression to prevent certain illnesses, as a study of Barbara Friedrichson and colleagues so showed. We have the presence of mind to actually improve telomerase levels, to actually change the enzyme and raise it that repairs the ends of our chromosomes, telomeres. We can improve our immune function with this kind of presence, this mindfulness. So in all these ways, deeply being present for adolescence as an adult, deeply being present for the experience of adolescence as an adolescent oneself, actually improves this presence, which is the basis of well-being, the basis of compassion, the basis of empathy. So together, we can actually expand our identity not just realize we're separate, but realize together we can make this world a more compassionate place, a kinder place, and a place filled with empathy.